So this is a look at 2023 AP Stats FRQ number one. So it's a problem involving data from streams and we're measuring the dissolved oxygen concentration in milligrams per liter of a variety of streams in Alaska. So the data set that we have presented here at the beginning of the problem is for streams that had water temperatures colder than eight degrees Celsius. And we know how many of them had uh, nine milligrams per liter dissolved oxygen, 10 and, and so on based on the distribution. Just make sure that you remember how to read a histogram. Uh, so if we focus on this stretch of the x-axis right here, the left-hand endpoint is always included on that stretch and the right-hand endpoint is discluded. So we would have 40 of these streams having nine milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen. We would have 94 having 10 and so on. Now what they ask us to do in part A is they ask us to uh, describe the distribution. So if you're asked to describe a distribution, there are definitely some things that you have to hit on in order to receive maximum points on the stats exam. You have to hit on shape, outliers, center, and spread. So I went ahead and, and looked at this and it obviously has this one peak right here. So I said that this is going to be unimodal. Uh, and then I also said it's left skewed, right? We have the tail of the data working its way outward to the left here. So unimodal and left skewed. For center, I went and found the median. So I think I have this on my calculator still, maybe. There we go. So I just totaled up, you know, 46, 89, 117. How many streams are represented within this data set? And there were 429. So if you would take that and you would divide that by two, uh, you end up with the, the 214th, 215th data point sharing the middle spot. So I just kind of counted in 46, 89. My 214th and 215th are going to be elements of, of this bar of the histogram right here. So I know that my median is at 11. And I attached units there. You always want to make sure that you do this description in context. So little things like including units can definitely be uh, a big help as far as scoring these go. And then for my measure for spread, I could have done the overall range. Uh, I could have done some work on the calculator and, and found the standard deviation of this. I went ahead and found the interquartile range, right? So if I have those 429 total, I can take those 429 and I can divide by four to break it into quartiles. And I know the hundred and uh, between the 107th and 108th spot is going to be the divider for the lower 25% of the data. And then the next 107, 108 values, and you can approximate here just due to the presentation of the data. But if I'm counting in 108 from the high end, uh, 46 plus 89 already puts me past 108. So I know I'm going to be looking at an upper quartile of 12. And then if I continue to count backward, my lower quartile would actually be at 10. So if I did, uh, 12 minus 10, my interquartile range is two milligrams per liter. The last thing that you need to make sure you hit on are the outliers. Now you don't have to do what I did here. I had already found the interquartile range for my uh, description for spread. So I went ahead and actually performed the outlier test. You would only have to do what you see I've done here if the problem said justify whether or not you have any outliers. Uh, it doesn't say that. So with this description, you can say, it seems like there are some outliers on the low end. I already had the interquartile range computed. So I went ahead and I found my, my lower boundary for outliers and my upper boundary for outliers by just going down one and a half interquartile ranges from the lower quartile and then up that same amount from the upper quartile. So any values below seven actually qualify as outliers. And remember, seven's included on this bar right here where we see 12. So we have 13 of these streams that measured uh, dissolved oxygen concentration of six milligrams per liter. Uh, so these 13, this one, this one, and this one would all qualify as outliers. Again, if, if you just said that it seems like we have some visual outliers on the left end, that's fine for the dis description of the distribution. I already had the interquartile range in place, so I, I went ahead and took an extra minute or two to formalize that. Part B says, okay, we've got a similar situation going on, but these streams that were 
dealing with now have water temperatures that are warmer than eight degrees Celsius. And so they present us with summary statistics for the warmer streams. And they simply say, use the summary statistics to construct a box plot for the dissolved oxygen concentration in these streams with the warmer temperature. Uh, it says, do not indicate any outliers. We don't really know whether or not there are outliers. I guess we could do some work similar to what I was doing earlier to determine that, uh, but it doesn't really require for us to, to spend time on that here. So we don't have to separate any outliers from uh, the tails of these of this box plot. So all I did is I took these first five values, these first five values would be the five number summary, min, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, max. So you just want to plot points at those locations uh, and then you draw your boxes through the quartiles in the median and then your whiskers or your tails on the outside ed edges down to the minimum and up to the maximum. Now the last part of this says that the researchers think that the streams with higher dissolved oxygen concentrations are typically healthier for wildlife. So which of the streams that we're analyzing here, the colder ones or the warmer ones, seem like they're going to be uh, better for wildlife, healthier for wildlife. So it was pretty obvious to me the length of this upper tail for the warmer streams distribution is, is going to cause this data to have a right skew to it. We would like more of our data on the higher end of these dissolved oxygen concentrations if we are in fact in a situation where that type of stream is healthier for wildlife. We have the upper 25% of the data spread out from, what is that, 6.12 uh, onward to the, the maximum of 13.45. But if you come back to this, you know, 6.12 would be somewhere in here. So if we just consider those outliers that we ruled out from the lower end of this data, uh, back in part A, we have 12, 15, 40, 94. All of these values are sitting above the upper quartile for the streams with the warmer temperatures. So it, it seems just based on that argument that we're going to have the colder streams being the ones that are healthier for wildlife. Uh, I kind of formalized everything here. So I said that only 25% of the streams from the warmer sample will have dissolved oxygen concentrations above 6.12 milligrams per liter uh, but then 16 off of that total of 429 are below are, are seven milligrams per liter or lower right so only 3.7 percent are seven milligrams per liter or lower so the complement of that would be 96.3 percent so 96.3% of the colder streams had dissolved oxygen concentrations uh, above the upper quartile for the data set for the, from the warmer streams. Therefore, we're looking at the colder streams being the healthier of the two for wildlife. I obviously kind of paraphrase what you see I've written here. You can obviously pause and, and read through what I have. One of the big things that you have to do, and I can't remember if I mentioned this back in part A, big thing you have to do on the stats exam you have to use context. So using units, referencing what data set, in this case you were talking about, warmer versus colder, uh, being detailed and, and making sure that you have context definitely is something that you need to make sure you do in any of your stats FRQs.